Hey, what's going on fellow Pattersonians? My name is Ilyas Oksas and I want to be your next mayor. I'm making this video to show you my plan to fix the tax crisis in Patterson. Now this plan not only fixes the tax crisis, but it also addresses a few other problems that affects Patterson in a negative way. Let me just get right into the video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some stuff on this whiteboard and explain my, my tax plan and hopefully I'll be able to communicate what's on my mind to you guys. So let me just get right down to it. What we have here is two identical houses in Patterson. They're the exact same size, they're in the same neighborhood, they're on the same plot of land. They're basically two identical houses. Except house A is well kept, well maintained, the, uh, it's got new siding, it's got nice fresh paint, it's got a beautiful garden in the front, extremely well kept, and the owner is very proud of it, and it's just a beautiful and safe home. Now, house B, the owner is neglectful. The owner is never there. The house is falling apart, the aluminum siding is falling off, there's paint chipping everywhere, the, the, gra the uh, grass needs to be cut, it hasn't been landscaped, and it's basically a filthy, unsafe dwelling, and it's abandoned. So one house is really well kept, the other one is a, an abandoned trap house, right? So you have the tax assessor, he's walking through the neighborhood, right? And he says, and he's, and he's doing his assessments of the taxes, right? And he sees house B, and he says, wow, that house is falling apart. It's not worth much. So he gets lower taxes than house A, because he walks by house A, and he says, whoa, that's a beautiful house. It's well taken care of. Oh my God, look at it, it looks pristine. This guy has money. You're not allowed to have money in Patterson. You're not allowed to have a nice home in Patterson. Screw you, I'm gonna raise your taxes, because your building is worth more than this crappy building. That's because the way the taxes are assessed now is it's based on what the buildings are worth. Building B, which is falling apart, is not worth as much as building A, which is nice and is well taken care of. So what we do is we penalize the guy who has a nice home and we reward the guy whose house is falling apart. That's the way the tax system is now. We're basically engineering a ghetto. This is, the, this is ghetto engineering 101. If you want to make a ghetto, you use the tax system that we have now. All right, I'm going to propose a solution. If you look at your tax bill, it's split up into two parts. One part is the value of the land, and the other part is the value of improvements on land, or basically the value of the house that's on that land. And it's split up in a 50-50 split. Now what I want to do is I want to increase the value of the land, let's say just hypothetically, make it go up to 90% and the building value to 10%. Put more weight on the land, a lot more weight on the land and less weight on the actual building. This way, the tax assessor doesn't have a personal opinion, doesn't have input on what that house is worth. That house is worth what the land is worth more than what the building is worth. Now in that situation, what's gonna happen is the guy who's taking care of his house and making his house look nice and have it well kept, that person is not gonna get penalized for keeping a nice house. The person who has the abandoned trap house is gonna get penalized because he's gonna get taxed at the same rate as the guy with the nice house. The trap house and the nice house are going to get taxed the same, which is the way it should be. And you're basing it on the land and not on the actual house. And what's going to happen is that guy with the trap house, he's going to say, whoa, if I leave this house abandoned like this, I'm going to be losing a lot of money. The taxes are way too high. So it's going to force him to either fix it, rebuild it, sell it, or lose it. That's what's gonna happen because that person's gonna say, hey man, the taxes are way too high. I better be using this land for something. With this system, you don't punish somebody for keeping his home nice. Reward somebody for having his house fall apart the way the current tax system is. All we have to do is we gotta tweak these values between the land value and the building value. We tweak it more heavily to the land and as soon as you do that, all these, um, property owners that have empty lots, those empty eyesores that are all dirty and unkept, that are just empty and not being used for anything, those lots are gonna be taxed exactly the same as a lot that has a house on it. 
So that's going to force that person with the empty lot to use it, sell it, or lose it. And what, it, what else it's going to do is when those empty lots and those abandoned buildings, if, when their taxes go up, that's going to be used to offset everybody's taxes. So we're going to have a decrease in taxes for the single family, even a bigger decrease for somebody who has a two family. Apartment buildings are going to get the biggest break. As far as factories go, factories that are using their land efficiently are not going to get a tax increase or a decrease. But the factories that are abandoned and not being used for anything, they're not going to get a tax break. What they're going to do is those abandoned factories are going to be taxed at, a, at the same rate as a factory that's actually operational. So that's going to force them to either use it or lose it. That solves the tax problem where the taxes are going to generally go down. It's going to force the, the, the landowners that aren't using their land and the empty abandoned homeowners and the empty factory owners, it's going to force them to do something with the land. And that's going to be the renaissance of Patterson as far as the tax code goes. Because right now we're engineering a ghetto, we're punishing people who keep a nice house, and that's not right, that's bad for the city. It makes the city unsafe, it makes the city crappy. It also solves another problem. There's a lot of illegal apartments in the city. A lot of homeowners, they're renting out their attic or they're renting out their basement as an apartment. Anybody who lives in Patterson knows that there are some illegal apartments being rented out. Actually, a couple of years ago, around the block from me on Gould Ave, there was a house fire. A gentleman that was living in the attic died. I don't know if he was renting it or he, maybe he was like just a family member. I'm not sure. We don't know exactly why that guy was in the attic, but somebody, he actually died in a fire in the attic. So a lot of these apartments are illegal and they're illegal because they don't have two exits to make it safe. That's why it's illegal. Now for the owner to make it a legitimate apartment, which is what we want, when, when that owner does that, we're gonna penalize that house by increasing its taxes because now it went from a one family to a two family. Or, you know, or if it was a two family, it went from a two family to a three family. So they're gonna get a huge increase in taxes. With this system, if they make that illegal apartment legal and safe, they don't get penalized for it. And that makes it safer for everybody that lives in these basements and attics. When we assess the value of a house, we need to assess heavy, heavy, heavy on the land and less, less on the improvements on the land. Because when you make improvements on the land, make your house better, make it nicer, add an addition, maybe even add a garage, add an extra car to your garage. We want your taxes to stay the same because we want to encourage that. We want to encourage development. But this way the system is now, if you make an improvement on your house, your taxes are going to go up and it's not worth it. That's what people are saying. It's not worth it to put new siding on my house. Why should I put new siding on my house? When I do, my taxes are going to go up 2000 a year. This, we're going to make it worth it for them by tweaking these numbers. I'm not an expert in math. I'm sure there's some mathematicians out there that, that can calculate these numbers better than me. You guys comment. So yeah, this is a proposed solution for the tax problem. The way this would work is it would, it, was, it would reduce all residential taxes all across the board. Commercial is going to stay the same as long as they're using the factory or the company is using the land efficiently, they're going to stay the same. We're going to tweak out these numbers so all homeowners, all apartment owners, the apartment owners are going to get a bigger break than the homeowners because they're even making a more efficient use of, use of that land. So the biggest tax break is going to go to those apartment owners, those multifamily dwellings, apartment complex owners. They're going to get the biggest tax break with this system because they're using that land extremely efficiently. In an ideal situation, these people that own these apartment complexes, you know, the, uh, the apartment owners, the slumlords, or whatever you want to call them, these developers that own these big apartment buildings, in, a, in an ideal situation, they'll take those tax breaks and reduce rent, or they would take these tax breaks and reinvest it into these properties and make the properties nicer. It's up to them. Hopefully they'll do the right thing. We can't control that. This is a free country. They could do whatever they want with those tax breaks. My name is Ilyas Oksas, and I want to be your next mayor. All right, just to let you know, I'm getting my petition signed, but I'm kind of struggling right now getting them signed because it's not easy to go chase down a thousand people and get their signatures. Um, it's really hard to determine who's a, a registered voter and who's not a registered voter or where these registered voters live. And, and I've been really struggling with getting that together. So my plan right now is to 
leave a bunch of these petitions at two locations. The first location is Nexus Wireless 919 Main Street in South Patterson. The person there, his name is Johnny, a good friend of mine. He's gonna have a bunch of my petitions. You can find my petition at Nexus Wireless 919 Main Street in South Patterson. Or you can go to Real Cuts Barber at 1019 Main Street in South Patterson. Uh, the barber there is Salim, longtime friend of mine, neighbor of mine for years. And he's agreed to keep some petitions at his place. So any of these two locations, you'll find my petitions. So please go to these locations, sign my petition, help me get on the ballot. Let's make some positive changes to the city. I'm a lifelong resident in Patterson. I went to school number nine. I went to Pasay County Tech, which is where I went to high school. I graduated from Montclair State with a bachelor's of science in business administration. Give me a voice and I won't let you down, Patterson. If you're a registered voter in Patterson, go to any of these two locations. Please sign my petition. I wanna thank everybody for watching. I'll talk to you soon.